Hey guys, I wanted to show you the rig I've been using for bank fishing for catfish for a while now and been getting uh, really, having really good success with really high percentage hookups. And basically it's just a modified pompano rig if you do any surf fishing, if you're familiar with that at all. But <clears throat> um, for a while I struggled with getting good hookups uh, with circle hooks. And then I realized that when I was surf fishing, I didn't have any issues at all. So I've kind of modified uh, those techniques and man the success has been great now for catfishing um, on getting a high percentage hookups so I'm gonna show you guys the rig and then uh, we'll take you out to the lake and we'll show you how we set the rods and lines up for all that to work together and uh, it'll help you guys out with those circle hook hookups all right so here's the rig uh, like I said it's just basically a modified uh, surf fishing rig or if you're a bass fisherman it's basically a drop shot rig, but we're not drop shotting it. So I tie a leader that's, you know, I start off with about a three foot long piece, tie this loop on here. And as you can see, uh, the circle hook is just looped on there, which is great because at the end of your fishing session, uh, you can just take it off if you don't want to get uh, all your stuff tangled up. On the bottom, same thing, this is just a uh, easy overhand loop and you can do the same thing with your weight if you want to change out weights or take it off at the end of the night uh, you can just unloop it <clears throat> and then you can just uh, loop it around a little more prepared you can just hook it on your reel like this no tangles everything's good to go all right guys so I like to start with about a three to four foot piece of leader material now this is this is probably about three and a half feet here this is 25 pound monofilament or actually this is 30 25 or 30 is what I normally use for just your average going to the lake catching some channel cats to for a fish fry setup all right now, one of the first things you wanna do is take your Atco Fish Slime Lip Balm and rub it on your lip. I'll show you why here. Because when you're tying the knot, you wanna lube that section of the line. And I want it to go about two thirds of the way towards one of the ends. Rub that lip balm on the line to lubricate it. <clears throat> And then in that section, we're going to loop it over and we're going to make a loop just a little bit smaller than my hand, probably about the size of my palm, maybe just a little bit bigger. We'll make that just a smidge bigger. Okay, so we have that there. You can go ahead and lube it up again. All right, now we're going to take this tag in and we're going to wrap it around that loop we just made five times. That's one two, three, here's four, here's five. All right, I'm gonna roll this. I got it a little bit closer to the end than I like, so I'm kind of rolling it down. All right, so now I'm gonna take those wraps there. I'm gonna find about the middle one. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm gonna grab the middle one and I'm gonna pop it open and stick my finger through there, okay? This is, we're, we're tying here as a dropper loop and we're gonna take the bottom of the loop and we're gonna shove it up through that opening I just made right there. You can see that. And we're gonna pull it up, okay? And I'm gonna hold that part I pulled up with my lips, not my teeth, just my lips. Okay. And we're just gonna pull it down almost tight right there and make sure everything's good to go. As you can see, I probably got about three inches of loop sticking out. That's about what I like. So I'm gonna leave that alone. That's all good. Now I'm gonna tighten it down more. And this is why the lip balm is important because it lubricates it and keeps it from heating up your monofilament and weakening it there. And we pull that down and then we can Pull on the loop a little bit, 
cinch that knot down a little bit more and you can see nice tight dropper loop now that's where the hook will go on the other end we're just going to tie a simple overhand loop grab the loop make a loop on the bottom it's just got to be big enough to loop around whatever weight system you're going to use yeah okay, i just like pyramid weights or you know like bell weights bank sinker sometimes just depends on the bottom of where i'm fishing okay and to do that we just overhand knot real simple poke that through there make the knot as big as possible can you see that there just cinch it down all right now we're good to go okay so we're gonna tie it to the line on the rod but i'm gonna give you a little bit of info on what i use for bank fishing rods uh, if i'm not going after huge fish or heavy river structure or anything like that uh, this is just a seven foot fast action this is actually just a cheap travel rod from amazon that i bought years ago to go uh, take down to the beach in mexico and it's worked so good just kept on using it this is a cheap quantum optics reel i think they're like 25 bucks it's an optics 40. it's worked great caught a bazillion fish off the beach in florida um, fishing around here tons of just so many fish oklahoma missouri florida i have abused the snot out of these reels got an article up on the blog about them uh i just can't say if you're looking for an inexpensive reel this was the only inexpensive reel i would buy but anyway we got it loaded with 20 po 20 pound leviathan braid and it's a fast action about seven foot rod which i like a fast action i know a lot of cat fishermen use uh, slow action rods or softer rods when i'm bank fishing i like a long fast action rod because you get farther casts and there's still lots of length to absorb uh, the runs of the fish but anyway so on the end just have a regular old swivel uh, tied with palomar knot to the leviathan braid and we're going to attach the leader to that and i'm just going to use a regular improved clinch knot Put it through there, probably go one, two, three, four, probably five wraps with 30 pounds, somewhere around there. Through the hole, back through it again. Lip bomb lubrication. Cinches up nice and tight with that lube. That was just a basic fisherman's knot improved clinch knot uh, if you haven't if you don't know that one you need to learn that one first all right so we have our uh, leader attached to a rod next thing we're gonna do is attach the hook to the dropper loop we put on there got an adco uh, circle hook here I think that's like a one knot somewhere around there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pinch the end of this uh, loop and you got your circle here. And it's very important that you go in through the front of this octopus bend here. And you might have to really pinch that down. Uh, so you just feed that through and then loop it around. Let's see if you guys can see that there the hook and pull it in tight now you can see that holds it in there great and the action of the way it's pulling it helps get that hook set because as it pulls it's pulling it in like this so it helps get that uh, circle hook set in where it needs to be all right then for the weight you got your loop at the bottom just the same thing, simple. Poke it through. I got a one ounce, uh, which this is more than enough for most situations. Uh, unless you're fishing in heavy current or something like that. But just go into your lake, three quarters, one half, three quarters, one ounce. It's great. You just loop that around, pull it down, and you're good to go. And then you can switch that. If you need heavier, lighter weight, you can switch it out. And there's a million ways to modify this rig to fit special situations, but this is all you need for 
99-95% of your bank fishing situations. Alright guys, we're back out here at the lake and uh, I want to show you how I finished setting up my rods for uh, catfish. We are fishing from the bank to get really good hookup percentage uh, with the circle hooks. So the first thing is when you're baiting your hook, you can see here, I got a uh, bluegill head on there. Now what you want to do is make sure that not much, you basically you want to hook as little of the bait as possible and still have it securely held in. When I'm fishing with a perch head, bluegill head, I like to go through the eye sockets there. And uh, you want all this space free. You don't want anything to block up uh, the mouth, the side of the mouth, getting in between there on the circle hook. You can see that right there. The other thing is to make sure you use appropriate size circle hook so that the thickness of the mouth uh, of the catfish can get in there. We're fishing for just regular old eater size channel cat, a couple pounds. Uh, this is, I think, a three aught. Should work good. All right, even if I'm fishing with, uh, on this one, I just got a little chunk of filet and show you here. Just have the end of the filet hook in there. Nothing's going to prevent that hook from. Uh, getting in the mouth of the fish all right all right next you can see I have these rods positioned in the rod holders completely vertical with the lines uh, just barely tight and that's why I like about a half ounce to one ounce sinker in this kind of fishing because it's just enough to keep the line um, stuck there so I can tighten it up just a little bit now what that does is that allows the allows the fish to load up on the rod so there's not much tension at first but as the fish takes uh, it continues to build and we'll get that hook set in you're using the force of the rod to set the hook now one thing i always want to make sure and do is have the drag set which i probably haven't done yet i want to have it set loose enough basically just tight enough that the fish has to pull pretty hard and bend the rod before uh, it pulls drag so and that's probably pretty good right there so we have the rod completely vertical we have the line just barely tight and we're using braided line I've done it with monofilament but honestly it just works a lot better with braid because the braid transfers that energy of the rod into the hook a lot quicker and uh, we'll get that hook set so we'll set this up here, we'll watch those rod tips, and hopefully I can get a bite uh, on camera. All right, you can see it looks like he's on there. Not a very big one, but get it. Oh yeah, oh, he feels pretty good. Oh, he feels better than I thought. Decent. Just a decent one. A little eater tag with a lot of spunk. There we go. Look at that channel cat. There you go. This one, he was hooked in the bottom of the mouth, but he's hooked all on his own. Didn't have to do anything with the rod. Just throw it out there and wait. And that's how it works almost every single time when you set up with this rig and you got your rod holder set straight up there. All right. We'll let this guy go. Oh. See that? He's stuck on there.
How's it going, guys? Not too bad. You doing good? Yeah. All right, guys. Well, I didn't take time to uh, talk about that fish because there were some folks coming by, but um, it was hooked in the corner of the mouth just like you wanted to. So you saw the takedown stuck on there. Works like that almost every single time. So. Fish just basically hook themselves, use the tension of the rod to do it in the uh, vertical rod holder. So give it a shot. I guarantee it'll help you out if you've been struggling with uh, circle hook hookups.